Today on First Century Foundations, I talk with Rabbi Ken Spiro about some of the controversy over the Temple Mount. Karen meets with John Ott from the Jerusalem Prayer Tower, and then I get to actually look for artifacts with Dr. Gabrielle Barkai. That's all coming up right now. Everybody, I'm Joe Amaral, and I'm Karen Amaral, and welcome to another edition of First Century Foundations. Uh, this season, we're focusing on the culture of Jesus. How important mm -hmm. it is for us as believers to understand the Hebraic or the Jewish roots, which make up the foundation of our faith. Yeah, and when you understand somebody's culture, you really get to know them. Yeah, you can ask her. She she knows about <laughs> understanding culture, and and his culture, and in his time, something that was very very important to Jesus was the temple, mm -hmm. and we're we're going to focus about that today. Now, uh, what was the purpose of the temple? Mm -hmm. How big was it? How important was it to him? I mean, I think it was so important because we're, we're in the Galilee right now, and he would make the trek according to to the Torah three times a year. You would make this pilgrimage, mm -hmm. this journey to Jerusalem, and so the fact that he went down there, it it kind of shows us how passionate or how important it was to him. Yeah. At least. Well, it was such a drive to to get from Jerusalem, and so can I? I can only imagine what it would have been like to have walked it. So he must have been very passionate about the temple and and mm -hmm. being there. And we read in Matthew 21 verses 12 through 14, Jesus entered the temple courts and drove mm -hmm. out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house shall be called a house of prayer, mm -hmm. but you are making it into a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. I mean, so we see how important and how sacred uh, uh, the place was to him. In, in English, we just call it the temple, mm -hmm. but the Hebrew word is Bet HaMikdash. It, it, is, it means like a sacred or a holy place to mm -hmm. gather, and that's why I think he reacted the way he did when he saw them kind of just benefit, benefiting from it and it made him so upset. And so today we're going to learn more about the temple. We're going to meet with Rabbi Ken Spiro, who's a great guy, to learn more about this, this magnificent temple as it was in, mm -hmm. in his time. And today I'm going mm -hmm. to visit the Jerusalem Prayer Tower and meet with John Ott uh, to see how Jesus is raising up the houses of prayer in Israel today. And that's one of the main focuses of our ministry is praying yeah. for people in, in Israel. Well, I don't know about you, but it sounds awesome. Guys, stay with us. We have a great show today. The Temple Mount that we hear so much about in the news is actually the place where King Solomon built the first temple of God that we read about in the Old Testament. It's also the same place that Herod the Great built the temple that was present during the time of Jesus. But today above the ruins of Herod's temple, also known as the Second Temple, sits the Muslim Dome of the Rock. To understand more about the history of all this, I met with Rabbi Ken Spiro. And, um, first of all, tell us where are we? I know that this isn't just a place where anybody could go. Uh, some people were very kind and allowed us to come up here today. Right. So we're on the roof of what's called Eshet Torah, which is an international outreach organization reaching out to Jews with little or no background to connect them to oh, the okay. Jewish heritage. This is their world, their world center. Uh -huh. And it happens to have an awesome view, which you should know is also open to the public. Oh, okay. It can be accessed via the Jewish Quarter, and it probably is, in terms of a view, one of the viewpoints for Jerusalem, one of the classic spots, and it one certainly gives an amazing sees. view of the Temple Mount. Absolutely. Mountain in the Western Here we have this representation of the Temple, but a lot of people okay. doubt even the existence of the Temple. Now, if we can, can we just pop around sure. the corner here? I just wanted to take a look out here. I want the audience to be able to see this. So here, here's the model, and just I want you to picture that being up on there and where the Holy of Holies is now is where that big golden uh, dome is now. What evidence besides tradition, is there any archeology? span Is there any, people say, ah, there's no Jewish connection, connection to this land and, and there definitely was no temple here. But do you know of, of anywhere, if I wanted to go to, to find some kind of physical evidence that there was a temple there, is there sure. a way? Sure, I mean, first of all, there, there's actually tons of evidence on the site. Unfortunately, a lot of it has been deliberately being destroyed to negate the Jewish connection. Um, no okay. one except, you know, really people have an agenda against Israel really deny there's a temple there. By the way, it's interesting that Muslim names, um, names for the site, they call it Al-Quds. Right. Al-Quds, which is the holy in Arabic, comes from Beit HaMikdash. They used to call it Zion or Batamakdis in Arabic, which is the Beit HaMikdash. 
And what's interesting and very little appreciated is when that building was first built in the late seventh century, mm -hmm. it was built at, by the Muslims as a sort of third temple site. And Jewish oh, okay. priestly families were brought to serve in it before any Islamic connection. Even though oh, Muslims really? built it, they would Jewish priestly families would serve and offer incense in that building to sort of reenact the, the priests offering the incense in the temple. That's a little interesting piece of trivia that most people aren't aware no, of. No, that's definitely. <laughs> but on the Temple Mount itself, there's a significant amount of archaeological evidence, one of its, much of which is largely being destroyed. But from especially around 2000, mm -hmm. the first couple of years of that second intifada, yes. when sort of Israel abandoned any supervision on the site, yep. the Waqf, the Muslim Religious Trust, mm -hmm. who has control of that site, which is interesting, because in 67, when Israel got Jerusalem back after the Six Day War, right. Israel handed over the site to the Muslim Religious Trust. The only, wow. we gave our holy site to another religion. Yeah. Okay, they controlled the site, and in, in that period of time when there was no supervision, they started to dig, especially in the, this northern, this southern corner of the Temple Mount, ostensibly to expand an opening into what is now what's called Solomon Stables, these large vaults. Is that in around Al-Aqsa? That's or? below the Al-Aqsa Mosque, oh, okay. is the largest mosque, underground mosque in Israel. It's built in vaults. They're originally designed by Herod and later rebuilt during her, right. to, to enlarge the platform. Yes. They call it Solomon Stables but to ostensibly to build a larger opening to that mosque, that Israel gave permission for the mosque, yeah. but they illegally excavated with no supervision using, we're talking about backhoes and bulldozers, something Through all the archeology span and ever, ooh, yeah, the bring antiquities. It to an archeological site. You... Archeology is a little shovel in a bucket, and yeah, you strain it, broom, you gotta know yeah. where you got it from. They, they took out 400 dump truck loads whoa. of dirt and 400. dumped it in the municipal dump in East Jerusalem, in Arab East Jerusalem. Okay. And then Gabby then Barkai, yeah. who is who is a lecturer and archaeologist who's now based at Bar Ilan University, they spotted this stuff and they realized it was literally chock full of archaeological remains. Just just out there. Yeah, just out there, just out there. He they went and got permission to take that stuff, bring it to a national park site, which is on the other side in the Kidron Valley. Okay. And and you can actually do a sifting project there. You can go. Unlike now the difference is, is usually when you sift you need to know where it came from. Now that's too late. It's already been schlepped there and dumped right. in. So now they don't care about the location, but what anyone can do really can dump, is you can take a bucket and they've developed a new archaeological method there, yeah. which is never used anywhere else in the world until I've seen it used here. You put the dirt into a uh, a screen. Then you pour water on it instead of just shifting it like this. Yeah, yeah. And then what they do is they clean. You clean off all the dirt and all the little rocks and things. You don't want mm -hmm. to look for stuff. And it's amazing what they found there. They found, and it's not just from the temple periods. There's, there's stuff going all the way back to the first temple period been found in there. Talking yeah. about arrowheads, coins, all Ooh. the way through every period of time in Jerusalem. It's like a slice of all of the the history of the holy of the holy platform in the mount. Well, I don't know about you, but to me. That sounds real exciting. I'd love to go sift through the dirt. You never know what we're gonna find. That's the thing to do, get your hands dirty. Don't go away. When we come back, Karen visits the Jerusalem prayer tower, and later I'm gonna get my hands dirty sifting for artifacts from the Temple Mount. For 2,000 years, man has been studying the life and words of Jesus. But in our modern culture, can we truly understand what he really meant? Now we can. Joe Amaral's book, Understanding Jesus, removes the veil of history and brings us greater understanding of the time and culture that Jesus and the authors of the Bible lived in. In Understanding Jesus, we study the feasts of the Lord as Jesus celebrated them and find valuable insight into God's prophetic timetable throughout history. Knowing more about this ancient culture will give you accurate insight into the teachings of Jesus and will take your faith to a whole new level. And this life-changing book can be yours for just $20. Call today and order your copy of Understanding Jesus by Joe Amaral, 1-877-628-2800. Or visit us online at www.firstcenturyfoundations.com. We're excited to be back here in Jerusalem at the Jerusalem Prayer Tower, and I'm here with John Ott. And John, can you tell me how you came to the Jerusalem Prayer Tower and what that journey was like for you? Sure. I was a worship minister in Seattle, Washington, quite close to Vancouver. Okay. And uh, the Lord sent me here in 2005, where I met my Jerusalem-born wife mm -hmm. in one of the four houses of prayer, a 24-hour facilities of prayer and worship. And we've been worshiping together ever since. Neat. 
And so, um, how many years have you been here now? This is our eighth year eighth and year. our seventh year of marriage. Seventh year of marriage, okay. So, you met here then? We met on New Year's Eve in the House of Prayer. Oh, isn't that at, interesting? Uh, bringing in the New Year with praise and worship. Mm -hmm. And we were married a year later. And now we get to do what we love to do best, mm -hmm. which is to uh, lead prayer and worship together, music and uh, prayer combined. We feel that's a key to joy in yeah. the House of the Prayer of the Lord. Yeah. You were mentioning uh, earlier when we were chatting about it, about uh, the joy of the Lord being in prayer and in praise. And you want to tell us a little bit about that? There's a scripture that says, I will make you joyful in my house of mm -hmm. prayer. Mm -hmm. And we know prayer is hard work. And we believe that the music aspect of it is the joy that God has inserted it to make it really a work of pleasure. Much like David, who uh, took his psalms and, 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 the, and the prayer together and created songs. Uh, unto the Lord. So we minister unto the Lord with mm -hmm. singing scripture, singing the Psalms, much like David did. It's also a picture around the throne that we see. Uh, you have harps there that symbolize music, and you see also bowls, which are full of incense that are accumulate at the point of God's choosing. He takes that bowl and he pours it out on the altar, and there's thunders and lightnings. His voice answers to prayer on earth. Mm -hmm. So we believe that this is a real aspect of joy and sustainability in the prayer room mm -hmm. uh, is music and prayer together. Yeah. And do you find that as people come, they sort of catch on to that too, and they catch that vision of joy? and. Um, Very much so. Yeah. We see uh, from Asia, we see from mm -hmm. North America and Europe, young people, old people, uh, filled with passion to minister under God mm -hmm. and to get His heart for their nation, for their congregation, mm -hmm. and to uh, receive those scriptures by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and to pray them out into the prayer room and to uh, sing them to beautiful music that mm -hmm. is created with instrumentalists. And how would our viewers be able to uphold this place in prayer and what you do and how can they uphold you in prayer and what would be special to your heart or needs that are maybe presented here? We ask that, uh, that the prayer support would come in for mm -hmm. the Jerusalem Prayer Tower, for the ministers that are here, uh, that they would be able to volunteer here in, a, in an effective, uh, sustained, uh, resourced way and that um, we are able to lift up for Israel all their needs mm -hmm. of these Israel Prayer Watch ministers and accomplish what uh, we are set here to do mm -hmm. on a bi-weekly basis. Do you find sometimes that you sort of become a pastor to the pastors in, in the sense of praying for them when maybe they have nobody in their congregation say that they could go to, they could come here and receive prayer and, and be uplifted? And Our heart goes out very yeah. much and, and, and as they send in their prayer requests, mm -hmm. We even read between the lines and pray mm -hmm. the apostles' prayers for them. They're doing mm -hmm. a great work in Israel. They need a lot of support for mm -hmm. their families and their congregations. For sure. Well, if you would like to be involved in praying for some of the ministries and the ministers that are here in this land, visit our website, call our office. Uh, you'll find the numbers at the bottom of the screen. And we'd love to hear from you if you would like to be involved in praying for them and receiving our bi-monthly prayer uh, report. You can pray just a minute a day for one of the ministries here in Israel. To make a donation or learn more about this ministry and the Israel Prayer Watch, visit us online at www.firstcenturyfoundations.com or call 1-877-628-2800. After meeting with Rabbi Ken, I decided to take his advice and get my hands dirty. So I went to the sifting site where all the dirt excavated from the Temple Mount had been taken to, and I met up with a familiar face. You guys already met uh, Professor uh, Gabi, where we were talking about another site where he made an amazing discovery. But now we're here talking about I mean, another remarkable dig that you've been a part of. Um, explain to me why this is even here. We're in this covered canopy and there's kids sifting through material. What is that material and how did it end up even getting here? That topography that we see, here to, uh, we see there today with a flat platform was created by Herod the Great. Yes. Who took the dome-shaped hill mm -hmm. and put it into a large bottomless box. Okay. And filled up the gap between the uh, slopes of the mountain and the walls of that box. Now if you look at the plan of the Temple Mount, this is oh, the summit great. of the Temple Mount yep. with the Dome of the Rock, which was never meant to be a mosque. It is not a mosque. It is a replacement of Solomon's Temple. Mm. 
and this is the Alexa Mosque, the present day building. Yeah. This vast white area is the roof of the Al Marwani Mosque in Solomon Stables, oh, which is okay. underneath. In 1998, hmm. they opened underneath the Aqsa Mosque, another mosque, the ancient Aqsa, okay. which was built into a subterranean structure of Second Temple period, mm -hmm. being the passageway named after Prophetess Khulda, uh, leading from the outside towards the temple in Second Temple period. That is a structure which has domes about it, stone-built domes, okay. and those domes are carved with decorations which are the best examples of Jewish art of Second Temple period in You're the world. Kidding. They're there now? They are not there now. I didn't know that. Uh, it is fully preserved for the last uh, 2,000 years. Wow. In any case, that became the ancient Aksa. The, han the Temple Mount is honeycombed with more than uh, 50 cavities which are known to us well, from okay. uh, scholars in the 19th century who surveyed them. Mm -hmm. Uh, those uh, probably there are many others which are not known to oh, us. Okay. In any case, these were penetrated in the 1990s, and all the soil from them was emptied. In the, 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 that soil was saturated oh. with uh, ancient remains. Oh, artifacts, all that, all, kinds. all that was thrown away. In any case, in 1999, the most outrageous thing appeared when uh, this pit here was excavated. You can see uh, the uh, you can see the place being excavated by bulldozers. That was in So that's that's along here. Here. Yeah. Here is there. Oh, okay. Yeah. You see the southern wall of Temple Mount. This is the southern wall. Oh, okay. And you can see the three and beginning of fourth uh, arches. Okay. Uh, those are the vaultings of uh, Solomon's stables. There are 13 of them altogether. Uh, the excuse was uh, an emergency exit for the illicitly built mosque. Uh -huh. Even an illicitly built mosque needs an emergency exit that is agreed upon by, by everybody. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they, what they did is not an emergency exit, but the main entrance to the building. You can see oh, it, it after finished. Oh. Yeah? And you can see the bulldozers and the trucks. Yeah. The bulldozers work there in a place where even a toothbrush is too large a tool to carry out an excavation. This is the most delicate archaeological oh. site in this country. Absolutely. And every square inch mm -hmm. of that soil is significant mm -hmm. for the history. Nevertheless, they did the work in this barbaric manner. Yeah. After all the soil from the Temple Mount was dumped, teams of archaeologists and volunteers led by Professor Gavi have been sifting through every ounce of it and have made some amazing discoveries. We have coins of the Hasmonean dynasty uh, right. uh, from uh, 2nd century BC and 1st century BC. We have coins of the Herodian dynasty, Herod the Great, his, yes. his son and his grandson, King Herod Agrippa. Uh, we have coins of the Roman procurators, among them uh, quite a large number of coins uh, minted by Pontius Pilate. Really? Uh, so uh, he was one of the Roman procurators yes. uh, in Jerusalem. We have uh, coins minted by the authorities of the first revolt against the Romans in the four years of the revolt uh, right. from 66 to uh, 70. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the first coin we had here mm -hmm. uh, was a coin of the second year of the uh, first revolt. And no this way. is the type of coins which are typical to the first revolt against the Romans. But we have also uh, the more rare uh, silver coins of the shekels, which were used for the temple taxation. Okay. And this is uh, the type of currency that had to be changed mm. by the pilgrims coming up to the temple sure. and uh, 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 in order to pay it in, in uh, pure silver and good coins. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, Jesus had to turn the tables of the uh, yeah. of the money changers at the Temple Mount, something which is told in the New Testament, which mentions the Temple Mount around 20 times or more. Oh, absolutely. Uh, do you think it would be possible for me to maybe try and sit through some dirt and no maybe doubt. I'll find a coin? You may. And you we'll may. have the conflict. Do I'm I get not, to keep I'm, it? Do I'm you get to keep it? I'm not going to plant any coin in, in the soil that you are going to see. That's okay. So if you find it, it's an authentic find. Okay, and I get to keep it? No. No. <laughs> no.
So which one did you guys put the coin in? The black one. one. The black. I, remem I remember black one. Right. Even. Okay, okay. I have to go with my gut here. I'm going to go for this one. Yeah, so you go to one of the one of these 50, 50 uh, this sifting one. positions. This one's okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so dump it? Yes, oh, okay. you dump it and then you take the hose. Okay. Okay, and I'm supposed to spray it out first, right? Yes, okay. into the sifter. Okay. Because there might be all kinds of tiny objects. Okay. Okay, now. You spread it and and spread wash it with, with the water again. Oh, okay. So any water, any mud which is adhering to the artifacts uh, is washed away. So that's enough with that's the enough. water. Okay. Now you can look through it. You have a piece of pottery here. No way. You have a piece of glass here. Okay, uh, the glass can't be ancient though. Uh, well. That is modern. That's but, modern. Uh, but you have lots of pottery. But they didn't have Coca-Cola in the first century, mm. I think? I thought they were yeah, all rocks. Another one. I'd make a terrible archaeologist. So this is bone. This is all pottery. Yep. Yeah. It was incredible sifting through rubble that spans thousands of years of history from the actual place where the temple once stood. Well, Gabi, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for uh, for coming down to meet us because this was kind of unexpected. You know, we came here and we, we learned we needed to have an archaeologist and yeah. we just met you in the previous show and so we called you and you came and I want to thank you so much for, for being willing, you know, to come down here. And you know what? I didn't find any coins this time, but maybe next time? Oh, uh, that means you have to come back. I hope so. Will you let me come back? For sure. For sure? For sure. You're most welcome. Thank you very much for coming. Hey, thanks so much for showing it, and I hope you blessed, guys learned something. Blessed better. be. Amen. Thanks so much. Yeah. God's Holy Days, the new DVD teaching series by Joe Amaral. Filmed in a conference speaking environment. Infused with rich visuals such as photos and realistic video reenactments, this series will take you on an exciting journey of discovery. In God's Holy Days, you'll learn the meaning behind many symbolic parallels that have long been forgotten by the church. Find out why most Western believers have little knowledge of these feasts and how much there is to gain once we understand them. This three and a half hour teaching series will show you how Jesus is both concealed and revealed in the Feast of the Lord from Passover through Tabernacles. You'll be amazed as Joe describes in detail how these feasts can still powerfully apply to all believers everywhere. Included with the purchase of this DVD is a seven week study guide to help you personally apply these many truths. To order your copy, call right now, 1-877-628-2800. You know, just when I think I can't have any more fun doing the show, I do. I have more fun. Mm. Today was was so awesome. Uh, I was hoping to have, you know, a, a cool experience, you know, going and right. sifting through the ruins of the Temple Mount. Oh, you know, wow. I've read about it for, for so long that, mm -hmm. uh, that, that the Muslims on top of the Temple Mount had been digging underneath because they were trying to construct something, but I, I didn't know what. Mm -hmm. and, and we got there. And oh, we were so disappointed because we, we couldn't film because uh, the archaeologist in charge wasn't there or an archaeologist to give us permission to be able to, to speak on camera. Well, I think it was so neat that chance meeting that we had, a divine appointment really, that he was right in the spot where we were going to film and yeah, the he we made is, the connection. Is Gabby Barkai yeah. is the archaeologist who yeah. you, shot, you saw sorry, in the first program who found the Silver Scrolls yeah. and we just kind of met him. Mm -hmm. And then the very next day, here we are going to the site that he's in charge of. Yeah. And Incredible. he's not there. And uh, the tour guide, he says to me, well, unless you know Gabby Barkai, there's no <laughs> way he, you're getting in. I said, well, actually, yeah. you know, which is really cool, you know, just how God ordains things. And it was neat because somebody tweeted me and said, hey, I'm praying for you to have divine uh, favor today and uh, well, uh, divine certain, encounters. Yes, it certainly was. Yeah. Definitely was no, to absolutely be able to was. run into him. 
I mean, uh, just hearing the history of the dig, mm. th they were constructing the Muslims there, a mosque underneath the mosque, and it held between 12 and 15,000 oh, people. Wow. So they had to move, uh, as you heard, 400 truckloads of dirt, and they just kind of dumped it mm. in the valley. And Gabby was like, why isn't anybody looking through this? I mean, there's gold there, not right. literally gold, but gold in terms of historical evidence of a continuous Jewish presence in this region. Mm. And um, just having him explain the background. Now, yeah. I just do need to say this, that we, we totally ran out of time. Um, Professor uh, Barkai was, was so amazing, giving us the whole history of what they were building mm -hmm. and the amount of, uh, of treasure, historical treasure they were able to find. W we couldn't put it into mm -hmm. the show. I mean, y you saw really, really a small yeah. segment. So yeah. go to the website and go to the, uh, the backstage pass, the kind of behind the scenes area of the website, and you can, you can watch uh, much more of, uh, of the interview. Uh, I had fun um, mm -hmm. uh, sifting yeah. through through the soil, and I was telling about it when I came back. Mm -hmm. And it, again, it was so awesome being able to have those little cameras. And so, as I was spraying down, um, you know, the stuff that we found in the sift, yeah. you, you guys could get a really cool, unique uh, angle. You know, found a human bone. You know, whatever. Ah. You know, found <laughs> pottery. It was just so amazing. Uh, again, all this connected and relating to, to the temple mm -hmm. where, where sacrifices and prayer yeah. was offered up. So while I was off doing my thing, mm -hmm. looking at the ancient, again, here you were looking and seeing what God is doing you know, yeah. now in the yeah. country. Well, meeting with John uh, was so special because um, as a little girl, mm. my dad, uh, in a dream, the Lord showed him a scripture verse and it said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah. And basically that has been sort of the catalyst that has got all of this started for us yeah, in our family. Force the driving behind. force behind it is prayer and and uh, looking at it um, from mm -hmm. that aspect. Um, my dad came basically just not knowing who he would meet or anything, but uh, another divine D appointment, totally divine you know, and appointment. and just meeting different people and being able to meet leaders in the land and begin to pray for them and and. Uh, lift up their prayer request before the Lord, and which started the Israel Prayer Watch for us and praying for all the ministries and helping yeah. them and watching them grow. And it's been really awesome to see mm -hmm. what God is doing today in the land. Yeah, so, so going from, from the, uh, the Holy Temple mm -hmm. back in the day, remember again, you know, the, the Bet uh, Hamakadash, the, that holy place, that sacred place to go and to gather. And here we are today doing that, helping you, giving you an opportunity uh, to reach out to help the believers here in the land. Uh, the phone number is on the screen. You can go to the website. Uh, not just come see the land, not just the ancient stones. Come see the modern stones, the living stones. And again, guys, remember how important it is for us as believers to understand the Jewish foundations of our faith, and that's gonna help us to better understand Jesus. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Shalom, and we'll see you next time. This is a piece of bone. What? That's a piece of bone? Yeah. <gasps> it's an ancient Napoleon. Hmm? Bone apart. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Folks is here all week. Okay. <laughs>